My name is Ann Patrickman. I'm from Linfield, Massachusetts. And I'm researching, and I have been researching for most of the last 20 years, six ancestors from Ireland. Um, although not directly uh, famine Irish, they came, the first one came in uh, the middle of our Civil War. Um, my mother always called him a reprobate, which I thought was a very strange characterization for her grandfather. His name was Morris Cody. He was baptized in um, the 15th of April in 1836 in the Roman Catholic parish of Nakanoor in Waterford County. Um, his parents were Michael Cody and Catherine O'Keefe. Um, I've been researching Morris because he was always a, a, an, an enigma to me if, from my mother's stories. Um, why would you call your grandfather a reprobate? And she left it at that. That was all that there was. Um, the other story we had was that he deserted the British Army. Now, in most Irish circles, that would have been a, an act of heroism, but um, she didn't say it that way. That was said with disgust. I've been able to prove, and I have the record, that he did indeed desert the British Army. The date given is the 31st of October, 1862. Um, he was in the Regiment number 864 of the Royal Horse Artillery, and it, um, he deserted at Canterbury. Um, it states in that that he was from Tallow in County Waterford. Now, we had also been told that his family were tenants on the Moore Hill Estate, and that's an area I still have to research. He doesn't show up again in records. I've looked and looked for uh, immigration records. He, he says on his naturalization papers that he came in at New York, but he doesn't show up again until he joined the United States Army on the 11th of April in 1865. Now, for anyone who knows American history, of which I was a teacher of American history, the war was over. He, he joined after the surrender. So I think he was looking for a pension, but he was discharged on the 12th of July in 1865. And um, that means he, he did not receive a pension. He was not in long enough. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, in my research I've also discovered that he left a wife and two children in Waterford. So not only did he desert the army, the British army, he deserted a wife and two children. That didn't stop him from marrying here in 1866, he married Julia Manigan. They had two children, one who died in infancy, the other who survived. But Julia, his second wife, um, died in childbirth of the second child. So here he was in 1866 with a, a little child and no wife. He married my great-grandmother, Jane Harrington, from County Cork. In, uh, on the 27th of August in 1870. Now, from my reckoning, this is his third marriage, and he hadn't bothered to annul or get rid of the first marriage, so he's a bigamist, and he married at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross, the Bishop's Church here in Boston. Um, he and his wife settled in Stoneham, Massachusetts. They lived in the, um, they worked in the, he worked in the shoe industry, which a great many Irish immigrants did, and um, he died on uh, the 9th of December in 1920, my mother, this is her grandfather, my mother knew him. She was about six years old when he died. And he is buried at St. Patrick's Cemetery in Stoneham, Massachusetts. But he's my most interesting character. Um, the one that I'm having the most trouble finding are my mother's grandparents on the other side, her mother's parents. Um, I've been able to do, detect her mother, Mary Duffy, who was baptized on the 4th of December in 1836 in the Roman Catholic parish of Tibopine in Ferrymount, County Roscommon. And um, her parents were Philip and Bridget McGrath. She immigrated sometime around 1855. So again, I believe it was from the famine that the family came here. When they arrived here, uh, the first census, which was an 1855, census that she appears in in Massachusetts. She's here with what appears to be her mother, two siblings, and an aunt. And the rest of the family, I'm assuming, either perished in the famine or died on the way over, but she was here and with her mother. Um, she married 
my, grand, my great grandfather, James McKernan, on 12th of February, 1862, in Natick, Massachusetts. They then settled also in Stoneham. In the, my grand, great grandfather worked in the shoe factory, and they lived there and raised their family, um, and, and that including my grandmother, for whom I named, their daughter Annie, for whom I named, and she lived there until her death on the 14th of March in 1927, and she is also buried there. My father's grandparents, I, I'm sorry, my father's parents were later immigrants. They came in the 1880s. Um, James Hurton was baptized on the 22nd of March, 1866, in the Roman Catholic parish of Nocanor in County Waterford in the town, and they lived in the townland of Newport. Um, his, one of the things that was very hard for me, his birth registration, because it was a, uh, after a, the 1866 when they were required to, was two days after he was baptized. So his date of birth given to the authorities was two days after he was baptized. So that was a little confusing to me at first, but I, I was able to um, work that out. His father, Robert, was a laborer. His mother was Mary Joyce. Uh, he immigrated sometime in the 1880s, and he was naturalized in 1900. Um, he came to the town of Wakefield, Massachusetts. He married my grandmother, Julia Horahan, from County Cork, from the uh, parish of Valley, Makota, and Ladies Bridge in County um, Cork uh, on 13th of September, 1896. They built a family. They had a home in uh, Wakefield. And one of the great prideful stories that my grandparents always told, he was the first Irish immigrant to become a supervisor for the town of Wakefield. Now, he worked on the water department, so he supervised basically the men digging ditches. They were the laborers, but he was the supervisor. And that, was, that story was told with a great deal of pride. Uh, eventually, his in-laws came and followed their children. For these relatives, all of their children, all of their siblings, and in, in my grandmother's case, her parents followed them, so the chain migration went both to the siblings and to the, to the parents to eventually. So I don't believe on my father's side, I have many relatives left in Ireland. And that's it. <laughs>